I don't always do an Easter Monday reflection, but I thought it was important this year. Part of what precipitated it is I was talking with my son, and he was asking about the story of the road to Emmaus. He was apparently having a conversation with someone else about this story, and they were convinced it wasn't in the Bible at all. And my son, who's who's named after it, uh, very clearly said, absolutely, it's there. I know it's there. And they got into this, this tussle. So my son came home and said, why don't people know about this? Why don't we talk about it? The short answer to that is because the road to Emmaus is usually the story that's talked about at worship on Easter evening. But the majority of churches don't have worship on Easter evening anymore. So we have a, a reading that's assigned every single year to be covered on the evening of Easter Day, and hardly anybody hears it. So I wanted to take this Easter Monday and talk about the road to Emmaus, because it's a, it's a phenomenal story in our faith journey. Very, very simply, Jesus is walking down the road with a couple of people on the way to Emmaus. This is out of Jerusalem. These are disciples, believers who have left before anything has really happened. Um, they were there, obviously, for the celebrations and the, and the sadnesses on the weekend, and they left town. And they are walking down, and this stranger starts to join them and asks them why they're so glum. They don't recognize Jesus at all. But they walk along, and one of them says, well, where have you been that you don't know what's going on? So they proceed as they walk down to tell of the work of Jesus, of the life of Jesus, of the promises of Jesus, of the death of Jesus, of the women who went to the tomb and found it empty. And then when they get to their home, as is typical tradition at the time and, and cultural expectation, they invite him in to join a meal. His cultural obligation is to say, no, that's okay, I'll just carry on. And their, their cultural obligation at that point is to redouble their invitation. So it plays out exactly the way culture expected it. And Jesus goes in and joins them at the table. And it's not to the moment when he picks up the bread and blesses it and breaks it, that suddenly they recognize Jesus is in their midst. Then Jesus is physically gone, and they rush back to Emmaus, and that's when they meet up with others who start sharing their various stories of encounters with Jesus. The reason it's so significant, well, it's twofold, really. One is, it's a wonderful way for people to have encounters with Jesus, recognizing along the way, there's, there's a lot of talk about Jesus is going to come back as a, a black woman next time, or a disabled person, or, or someone who's going to stand out. The reality is, when Jesus returns, he's not going to stand out. Jesus is going to be just like us. We can't tell the difference. We're not going to see any of the majesty because when we look at Jesus the Christ, we're looking back through the resurrection. We're not looking at who he was when he started his ministry. Everybody expects this grand Lord, this king, this, this one who's going to come in absolutely amazing and everybody's going to be able to point and say, yeah, there he is. But that's not how it's going to be. That's not how it was the first time. The fact that Jesus defies expectation is one of his defining qualities, that we don't know where to look. So he will not be, she will not be, whoever the Messiah is will not be obvious to us until after the fact. And the road to Emmaus tells us this story. It's not till we are in the midst of breaking bread and being community together that we're going to be able to recognize the Messiah in our midst. It's also why we do Eucharist, why we do communion, so we can go through the motions and recognize that Jesus shows himself. The Messiah shows themselves to us in the sacraments, in the breaking of bread, in the, in the, the water of baptism and the promises. The other reason it's important is because the road to Emmaus is a very wonderful metaphor for how faith develops. Almost everybody has heard of the road to Damascus. I mean, maybe not the people outside of the church, but anybody inside the church. And especially if you tend towards Anabaptist traditions, more low church traditions, it's seen as the big experience. This is how you know you're a Christian, is because you've had that big lights in the road, fall off your horse, stunned, out of the way moment and you can only be Christian if that has happened to you and there have been so many people hurt by the assumption that that is the only way to know God the road to Emmaus gives us a whole other road and journey metaphor where Jesus is walking with us from the beginning 
we might not recognize Christ, but Christ is there with us along the way, listening while we talk, not interrupting us, while we work through the promise, while we work through the reasons to believe, the reasons to doubt, and not till the end, when we are at a comfortable place, is the Messiah revealed? Is we, are we finally able to see Christ? We need this story as part of our faith journey to recognize that we are not always going to remember the promises. The women on Easter Sunday didn't remember the promises. The men, young men, the angels, assumably, at the, at the grave had to remind them. And they're like, oh, right, light bulb. Yes, this was expected. We wanted this. They went to tell the others. The, those in the upper room didn't believe them. Because so often our life gets in the way of our trust and our belief. And also, if you really look at so much of what Jesus promised, it's both logical, reasonable, applicable, and also fantastical in a world that does not celebrate people as worthy the way Jesus taught us to. So everything in our being, every, every scientific nodule we have in our heads fights against the amazing story of Jesus' resurrection. It's going to continue fighting against it throughout the entire season, especially when we get to Ascension and Pentecost. It's not logical, but faith was never asked to be logical. Faith is something that we develop with time. But just like Cleopas and, and his companion along the road to Emmaus, we have to keep coming back to the, sto the story, keep coming back to why it makes sense where it doesn't make sense. And then Jesus will be revealed, Christ will be revealed in our midst, in the very simple rituals that we share together as a faith community. So on this Easter Monday, I certainly invite you to continue walking with your faith all through Lent, we have been looking at ourselves, looking a little deeper into how we need to be as Christians, how we develop this discipline, how we look at ourselves as people of faith to try to, to mature that faith, to shore, shore it up, to make it a stronger sense going forward. Holy Week, the entire experience of Holy Week was not only to go darker, but to get to that crescendo of Easter morning. We've had that experience now. Now it's time to take everything we've learned through Lent, everything we've learned through Holy Week, everything that we have celebrated with the day of Easter, and start now our Easter journey, because Easter has just begun. It's not a one-and-done thing. It is a multi-week thing. We've got 50 days now before Pentecost, 50 days of Easter to celebrate every day the resurrection. And one of the really cool things about some of the Bible stories is that they only share a handful of the experiences with Jesus after resurrection. But so many of them had them. And through those witnesses, we can learn a little bit more about how Jesus can appear to us. Because in uh, traditionally in the first century, the way you knew something to be true was the number of witnesses you had. The way we can know Christ's resurrection is true is the number of witnesses throughout the last two millennia that have had an experience of the risen Christ, of the resurrected Lord. People who have had their entire lives changed by this story. And by walking the road to Emmaus, by slowly developing and talking at our faith and getting to the point where we have the experience of Christ presenting Christ's self in our midst, then we too can rush back to the community and say, I've seen Christ. I get it now. It is absolutely beyond anything imaginable and completely everything that he promised. And that is the message of Easter. Death has no hold. Faith changes lives. Actions matter. The simple breaking of bread is revelationary. We are a chosen people. We are a risen people. We are a promised people. And there's absolutely nothing in the gospel that we are promised that cannot come true if we work together.